Fontaine's DC have finally released their fourth album. Feels like they've been releasing singles for fucking God knows how long. Uh, before we get into it, oh, well, the album is called Romance. Liam, what does oh. the DC and Fontaine's DC stand for, please? D- Dick Cock. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you wanted. Fucking hell. Is that, is that, that you wanted? Exactly, that is exactly oh, what I yes. wanted. Talk about romance. Talk about romance. Give me Dick Cock every day of the week. Um, We have a very love indifferent relationship with Fontaine's DC. Wrong words either side. Um, yeah, like slash indifferent. Let's go yeah, Indifferent more slash central. indifferent. Yeah. Po- indifferent um, positive. Bracket. <laughs> indifferent yeah. negative. Bracket. Yes. Um, I feel like it's fair to say we really liked Starburster when it came out. Uh, we really liked Favourite when it came out. And then just gradually the excitement has dwindled ever so slightly. Because we seem to be in this trend with Fontaine's DC where they release a fantastic song and then just gradually just peters off a little bit. Don't know if that's nope. the right phrase. No? I disagree with that. It oh. starts off raveled and then becomes unraveled. Okay. But it starts off, it starts off raveled. In. Raveled. Add that word to your vocabulary, Carl. I will going forward. You'll be so apt if you do that. Um, well personally for me with Skin Fear I really like Jackie down the line and I was like okay finally Fontaine's are clicking with me it didn't spoiler alert and I've kind of done that again but I I prefer this album as a whole to Skin Fear I feel like it's a lot more accessible there's there's more going on with the vocals, which has always been a bit more of a sticking point for me getting into the band. But again, I find the first part of the album enjoyable, and then it just kind of goes, and I lose interest because it is just all that little bit too similar. They definitely do more. There's more variety, but still there's not enough for me to keep it interesting until favourite, which is obviously undeniably a fantastic song mm-hmm. um yeah i don't know i'm just left a bit disappointed again yeah i think so i think after revisiting skin fear which you know we've done for a reason which will become clear at some point teacher um i don't know if, that's, if it's out yet anyway oh, but, you can retrospect listen uh, there'll be a rank for skin to fear look for it it might be there might not be um I think I've realised the thing I like about uh, about Fontaine's DC is when they do something kind of bold and with it's, it feels like it's with purpose mm-hmm. uh, and a sense of urgency, which I think the, Skinty Fear has a fair few songs on there that cover that for me. Um, whether they're just kind of it's just because they're heavier is the kind of <laughs> with purpose or. I don't know. It just feels like there's a a lot more behind the song. Not say I'm not going to say emotion because I'm not going to argue that romance doesn't have emotion behind it. But it just feels like there's more of a pushing uh, force behind the songs that's more interesting. Whereas I feel like this album, romance, just lacks that for me. I agree. The vocals are an improvement. Uh, I say an improvement. I never had an issue with them. Although going back to Skinty Fear, I found it more annoying than I ever did before mm. because I think on romance. Uh, Green's really yeah pushing the boat and it's it's a lot more interesting, but the songs themselves, the music, uh, just kind of like the instrumentation and stuff, just isn't as interesting to me as what they've done in the past. And like you know, th- apart from Starburster and probably Favorite, are the only ones I I quite like Def Def Kink. Um, the rest I'm not asked about. Even the other singles, I'm really I just can't see myself going back to it. And as a full album, I just definitely won't go back to it. Mm. Well, that's uh, quite a statement to me. Um, the singles for me are the best parts of this album, and that even includes uh, in the modern world, which was released like twenty seconds before the album came out, or whatever. Something <laughs> stupid it was. Um, <laughs> I just think they're the the high points. They're the most interesting musically and probably vocally on the album. Apart from mm. Bug, maybe. Bug's a bit more 
that's growing on me. A lot of them are growers, um, I found, um, that are album tracks. Mm. I still think Favourite is my favourite. Uh, ha ha ha. Um, romance, I don't know if you caught this, but I've um, a little bit of uh, what's the Arctic Monkey song called? Sculptures of Anything Goes. A little bit of that going on musically I got from that, so that song. Yeah, I get what you mean by that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it, I definitely think, I know I said I may have agreed with you in the chat before, Liam, but um, on re listen of Romance, I just think that actually the music is more interesting than Squinty Fear, um, as is the vocals. Yeah, I just yeah, I don't agree, and I don't know what it is. It's hard to articulate. I think. Um, I, sorry to interject. I'm oh. in the middle of the pair of you. I don't think the music's more interesting. I think the songs are better constructed, which makes it a more enjoyable listen. Because there was definitely aspects of Skin to Fear. <laughs> uh, I can't uh, like Nabokov. That's brilliant musically. Um, I can't remember. We'll talk about that in the rank. Um, but there just wasn't enough on Skinty Fear to make me enjoy it as a project. It was all too very at one note. And I don't know if that was just the, the vocals kind of making me think that, but mm. there were so many like filler tracks in my mind mixed in with some great songs, like Roman Holiday is a great song. Whereas this is all collectively a step up, in my opinion, for listenability. Definitely. Starburster is for me a massive standout. I wish they kind of pushed the soundscape in that direction a bit more, mm. um, which is a shame. Yeah. I like Sundowner. I like obviously I'm a shoegaze boy, um, but even that doesn't really stand out for me in this album. It kind of feels not disingenuous. That's the wrong word, but they could have really pushed that more if they wanted to go down that road. And it all just kind of feels a bit, I don't know, just disappointing again because they can release songs like Starburst so they can do it. I feel like a lot of it's just a bit, and I know this is going to sound inherently negative, the word itself, but I think it's mostly just because it's not what I want, but it just feels quite mopey, the song, like a lot of the songs. Yeah. Like I, like I say, there's just not that kind of, that urgency and stuff behind some of those songs they don't they don't feel overwhelmingly uh emotional so like even those like s- long sweeping moments and like horses as the whatness and stuff like that just don't hit in the way you want because they're mm. just a bit kind of like again undercooked isn't really the right word but it's just i don't know it doesn't feel i know right. I, I know what you mean there is just something missing yeah there's just something throughout missing. the whole of their discography for me i don't understand why they are revered as much yeah. as they are I, I genuinely don't they're a, they're a good band they're not fuck, like the next coming of christ like people say they are like they're, they're just <laughs> they are just not yeah. that good they are perfectly all they're an all right band they are yeah. not fantastic in my opinion and i don't want to speak yeah, to therapy, I but i th- i know you agree yeah instantly wonder horse whose album we will be covering next week so much more exciting, so much more urgency. 100%. Revere Wonder Horse in the way you revere Fontaine's DC, and the world will be a much better place. I think that Wonder Horse is getting some reverence. Yeah, one? yeah, they're, but, they're definitely taking um, up a bit. They're um, also just kind of uh, sorry, we're not talking about Wonder Horse. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> okay. I was going to just jump up some news about Wonder Horse, but it's irrelevant. Um, yeah, oh, go on. When there's a sense of urgency and a sense of experimentation pushing out that boat is when this album really stands out. And apart from that, it just feels like they're doing what they know they can do mm-hmm. and get, you know, their already existing fan base excited about. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah. like, you know, a lot of people are saying how this is going to be the thing that draws in new audiences and stuff. 
which uh, is it? It's, it's ju- definitely accessible. But well, it's just... it's, yeah, but it's just kind of like oh, so what you're saying though, what you're doing is bigging up the fact that they've just made it a bit more accessible. Is it mm-hmm. going to draw in these new... Do you know what I mean? I feel like so many reviews and stuff that you see online are so fucking overblown. You're not wrong. Exactly. I, I went through Indie Heads the day it was released, and obviously, I'm not going to generalise, but a lot of people who use Reddit frequently are a bit, you know, dramatic. <laughs> they, exagger- they exaggerate their feelings. No. Oh. I've never heard this. <laughs> it's, it's very... It's like, it's fucking awful, or it's the best thing since yeah. sliced bread. And apparently this, about nine hours after this album was released, it was the best album of all time, yeah. according to Mojo, in 2024. It was just, wow. uh, like, there was so much hyperbole. Yeah. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. And it is a perfectly fine, spoiler alert, 7 out of 10 album. <laughs> yeah. No, you It's not the best album of fucking all time, is it? No. Don't I mean, be ridiculous. I just, yeah. I, I mean, again, I know I'm, this is my opinion. Uh, and this is it's coming from my position of not really enjoying the album but do people love every single song on this album like it to, I'll be, like I said before I really will only ever the only non-single I'd re- revisit is Death King I do really like Death King some of the other ones are fine like they are fine but they just don't really do it for Death King which does actually sound a little bit Wonder Horsey talking of them um, but it has that kind of put that kick behind it it sounds like it could have almost been on skinty fear and clearly that's just where i'm pointing towards but not all 11 of these songs are great enough to say this is one of the best albums of the 21st century yeah bang on it's not even the fucking in the top 10 of the year in my opinion and it's been a pretty average year Mm. so rankings ratings and rankings ratings well tell them you're already hitting yours yeah, I feel like I've already overcooked that as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll just stick with this. I'll stick with the seven. Just yeah, see. I think six does feel harsh because I think they're still mm. a solid band. And like, it's not they've not I done think... anything bad here. We should we really should have given ourselves the leeway to give point fives. <laughs> yeah. This is a point five. Well, we just have always been too high. Like six isn't that bad, is it? Realistically, it's better than average. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know what. If it was, if we were doing it in fives, it'd be a three out of five. Out, out of five. Mm, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to lower it to a six. Come at me. No, a three out, a three out of five. I'm oh, sorry. I thought you said three and a half out of five. Um, yeah. Fuck it. Let's right. say six. <laughs> let's go with six. Six. Um, I'm between six I and seven. seven. Oh, yeah. It's there somewhere, it's isn't seven. it? It's six and a half to seven. Probably. It is probably six and a half to seven. I wouldn't say it's below six point five. So it's probably fairer to say it's a seven. If anything. It's a solid 6.7, 6.8. Thanks, Tim. I am intrigued by if the fact this didn't, this album didn't have favourite, would I like the other singles they released as much? Because when Starburster came out, I enjoyed it a bit, but like I didn't revisit it. And then as soon as I heard favourite, I then went back um, and started uh, liking Starburster more. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm just, if that if it wasn't on the album, I don't know if I'd really care as much. There's something about that that maybe draws me into it more because I know I've got mm. that safe mm. song. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it anyway, is nice when that when that comes in towards the end. Yeah, it doesn't feel as mopey anymore, does it? Yeah. Um, thanks for watching the review. If you've uh, enjoyed it, you'll be able to like, subscribe to see more, ding the bell so you'll be notified when we upload, which you mm-hmm. know is sporadic. And leave if you disagree comment. with us, get creative with it. Yeah, please. that's all I'll say. Just entertain us. We've had some beautiful mm-hmm. hate comments in the past. So <laughs> if you want to do your research, they're on the Liam Gallagher <laughs> and John Spire video. Yeah. And on one of the previous Fontaine's uh, single reviews, there was a good one in there. So uh, just don't watch those <laughs> we videos. We really miss it, to be honest. It, it really made our days. Dopamine rush is running low in my life. I've got nothing else going on, so please. Yeah. Please do it. Uh, goodbye. Bye. And goodbye.